Let us sing to the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. Here we go. Welcome to chapel to you in the room. You are ready. Apparently you only want to sing. I think you've come to the right place. And to those watching online as well, welcome to chapel, which where we gather like this every week. But today is a little bit special because today is our songwriters chapel. It's our originals chapel many of whom are actually playing and leading us in worship this morning with songs that they have written. And I can personally tell you that this team have been very diligent. They've been rehearsing, they've been writing, they've been crafting, and they have been believing in great anticipation for today. So the next few songs we're about to sing have been written by our team, and they're going to be leading us together. And I've been asked to just frame the service and to frame the next few minutes of worship. Is that okay? You know, since the time of Miriam and Moses and Moses in Exodus 15, uh, 
writers have been giving musical expression of praise to God through song, through song and poetry, beginning with the patron worship leaders or songwriters, if you will, of Miriam and Moses. And right throughout the centuries, writers have been putting expressions of praise and worship and thanksgiving to song. And by God's grace, our church, this church where we stand, has been the birthplace of original songs of worship for over three decades. Praise God. Many of you have been impacted by the music that's been written from this house. And I would say my own journey as a worshiper has been to the soundtrack of the music composed from writers in our own community of faith. You know, it's only appropriate that we've honored the songwriters that are leading us with their music, but to also honor one of our church's most faithful and longest serving songwriters who continues to mentor a new generation of songwriters. Through his coaching and his masterful guidance as they curate music and poetry, we all love and appreciate Ray Batum. Ray Batum's faithful commitment to committing the craft of writing songs to serve the church for over 20 years. And you've mentored and discipled most of the team behind me to do the same. You've you've remained faithful and we thank you for your service to mentoring and discipling a generation of worship leaders and songwriters. Is that okay? So as the team prepare to carry on and lead us in their songs, may I offer a call to worship. Is that okay? From Psalm 100. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness and come before Him with joyful songs. Are you ready to come before Him with joyful songs? Enter His gates with thanksgiving and His courts with praise. Give thanks to Him and praise His name for His faithfulness continues through all the generations. Amen. Amen.
in Jeremiah 10, verse six and seven, it says, no one is like you, O Lord, you are great. Your name is mighty in power. Who should not revere you? O King of the nations, this is your due. Among the wise men of the nations in all the kingdoms, there is no one like you. Father, thank you that you are so unique, so worthy, so, so holy, that there's no one in the entire world. There's no one in the entire universe, in all of creation that is like you. Today, we're here to worship you and worship you alone. Come dwell among us. Come speak to us. We seek your face alone, for there's no one like you. You're the God who made a billion stars in the fire. 
you lift up your voices from the front to the back, the left and the right. Hallelujah, Jesus, you are worthy of all our praise. Amen, amen, amen. The presence of God is so powerful in this place. His presence is powerful. And I had on my heart this morning, Psalm 145, verse three. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom. One generation will commend your works to another. And this, this verse really resonated with my spirit. One generation will commend your works to another. And college, there is a generation that had faith for us. There is a generation in the past that had faith for you, for me, for this college, for the church. And we are, rest, we, we are standing on the faith of those who have gone before us. But we also are a generation of faith. We are a generation that has faith for the presence. And I'm gonna share some of what God is doing in our student body. And someone here is praising God for healing from a mental health disorder. Amen. Our God is our healer. We also have someone uh, praising God for our incredible songwriting community. So can we just take a moment and thank the team? There are countless hours and, and prayer and dedication that go into um, creating the songs that we get to sing. And this, this is a gift to our college, but also a gift to the church. So we're so grateful for our songwriting community. Um, we have someone praising God for Sammy. And I believe that's Sammy who's singing here from the city campus. And someone is praising God because Elvira is back for college. I don't know what that means. Is that a faith statement? Well, it's good to have Elvira in the house. But anyways, talking about generations, because we are a faith generation, we are gonna have faith for the future as well. And we have some needs in our student body. And Katerina is gonna come up and pray for us and lead us in prayer. But we have at least three prayer requests here for healing. And we also have someone celebrating healing from mental health today. So we're gonna have faith for healing in this place. We have um, Daniel is pray, uh, believing God for wisdom. Um, so we're gonna believe with Daniel. And who needs a bit of wisdom in this season? I know I do. Um, and then we're believing uh, for the favour of God. So Katerina, why don't you lead us in prayer? That'll be awesome. All right. cool. Let's lift Jesus. our hands and pray together. Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that, that you are here in our midst. Thank you that you see every person and you love every person and that you know what is truly going on. And Lord, we thank you that, that you died for, for our, on our behalf. And on the cross, you took upon yourself every sickness, every disease, so that we may be healed and we may be whole. So we just speak over every person that needs healing and we just declare, we speak forth healing, God. We, we pray that every sickness has to leave because they have no right to be in your beloved's body. Thank you, Lord. And Lord, we thank you that, we pray that we'll be, we'll be a college body that is discerning and that is receptive to the guidance of the Holy Spirit. We pray that you will, that you will lead us and that you will guide us and we will have hearts that is quick to understand, eyes to see and ears to hear what you are telling us and where you're going. We pray for open doors. We pray that you will open the right doors and you'll close the wrong doors, God. And Lord, we pray for favor. We pray that we will be a college body that is reliant on your favor and not our capabilities or our talents, God, but that we will be marked by your favor, God. So before we see before we see the breakthroughs, God, we give you all the glory and we give you all the honor and we give you back all these prayer requests, God, and we and we leave them in your loving and capable hands. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, Katerina. You know it is powerful when we put words to our faith. It's powerful when we put Scripture to what we're believing for. And so as a college, we are a college of faith and we are gonna be believing for all of these needs to be answered in Jesus' name, amen? Amen. amen. Well, every chapel is special. Uh, today was very special. Every chapel is special. And um, we have an incredible man of God bringing the Word today. And I had the absolute uh, pleasure of serving alongside this man uh, when I was in college back in, this would have been 2007. It was in, when I was in my third year of college and both of us were serving at our Southwest campus. He was a wildlife leader. 
Um, and so we have the great honour and privilege of having David Ware bringing the Word today. And so you're already standing, but can we honour the man and honour the Word of God? Amen. everyone. Um, can we thank our worship team? That was amazing. Uh, first things first, I just felt in worship and I was talking to someone before worship and I just wanted to pray for this because I don't know if there are many people, but I felt in worship that this might have been, this might be kind of a thread through this group of people. But, and I am so okay, like don't, if this is not you, don't feel like, sorry for me if none of you are dealing with this. I'm okay, I'm good, I'm gonna survive another day. Um, but is there anybody who's been having like crazy dreams at night? Like, like out of the ordinary, like wildly, like this never usually happens to me, crazy dreams. Maybe we need some keys to make this not awkward. <laughs> Cause this definitely wasn't on the cards. Um, if you could just lift your hands up high, if that's you. And do you want to come and pray for this? Are you, are you cleared for platform? Okay. I think so. I think so. Yeah, I don't exactly know what to pray, but I'm in, that, I'm in that boat for sure. And I do believe we are living in remarkable days. I don't know why I'm having dreams. I don't know why you're having dreams, but I'm just going to commit our, ourselves afresh to God and that he'd reveal himself to us in our sleep and that we would respond to him in a mighty way. So I'll, I'll pray that. If, if, if that is you, why don't you stretch your hands out? And if you are near someone, why don't you, why don't you lay hands or, or reach hands towards them? Lord, I thank you for what you're doing in this time. If I'm completely honest, I don't understand all of it, God, but I know you are in control. Just as we sang that song from our team, we know we can rest assured that you're in control. God, you brought us here. Some of us across, Lord, incredible situations to miraculously place our feet on solid ground here. And we are aware, God, there are places in the world that are still oppressed and it's not legal to say your name in public, but here we are singing your name that we, that we write about, that we dream about. And God, you are giving some of us remarkable dreams and visions. God, and we don't need to understand it. We can just know that you are moving amongst us and we trust what you're doing in us, God. I pray that we would respond in a way that glorifies you. God, you give us pictures of how to put words, thoughts, actions to what you call us to do. God, and we commit ourselves afresh to you again. Lord, we cast out clout, we cast out distraction, and we pray you would have your way amongst us in a mighty way. I pray even today over the word, God, that, that words would be spoken that would resonate with what you're already speaking to us. So we commit these moments to you, we commit our dreams to you, work in them in a mighty way. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. 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 All right. All right, God, I got the crazy stuff out of the way. Um, you may be seated. Uh, thank you, team. You guys can not go too far, but you guys can chill for a bit. Uh, I'm not here for a long time. Um, just a good time. Is that a song? I'm not even sure about that, <laughs> whatever that means. Um, but I was asked to speak on, on uh, you know, today for this particular chapel, and I love it. I get to write songs, and I've written songs with some of you here today, and um, I've gotten to lead worship at our church um, but specifically, I don't necessarily speak all that often. I, don't, um, I wouldn't consider myself a preacher by any stretch of the means. It's kind of like saying, because you're good at go-karting, then you can race in the F1. Like, I feel like it takes a life dedication and a lot of study and a lot of wisdom and a lot of download from the Holy Spirit to be able to be called that. Maybe I'm wrong. That's just how I see it. Uh, so today, I'm just Big Brother Dave. And I said yes to speaking because I specifically thought that I had a word and a few words, a couple of ideas that I wanted to share with us today. Um, I understand that times in society, in life, individually, amongst friends, amongst family, like it has always been, there's been turbulence and, and disruptive seasons. And I think in a lot of our spaces and a lot of the people that we know as Christians, we have the ability to walk into spaces 
walk into our own situations and declare the truth of God over those things. Um, so to kind of give you a bit of a quick brief on how I got to sit up here today, uh, I was born in a nation called Fiji. Uh, I was quickly whisked away to New Zealand where I became like a teenager. Uh, and then I spent a lot of years between uh, Australia and, and Auckland up until I was about 16. And then, um, which I guess is only like four years, but there was, there was a lot that went on. Um, but my testimony is simply this. Like I grew up in a Christian household, but didn't know God for myself. I grew up in a pretty poor neighborhood, high crime, lower socioeconomics. So there was a lot of, you know, abuse around me and drug use and criminal activity. And so that's kind of the framework that I grew up in. That was normal for me. And so lo and behold, I was 11 years old, got into a bunch of trouble with the police. I broke into some houses and uh, uh, and sorry, one house. I'm just, you know, you got to exaggerate a little bit. I, I, was, I was like breaking in the house. I broke into one house, drank one beer. Um, <laughs> but I did get busted for selling cigarettes at school as like a, an 11 year old, right? Which I actually didn't know. You could actually, that's like, that's a criminal thing. Like, that's, and I was like, whoa. So the police took me away and instead of arresting me or putting me in some sort of delinquent program, they put me through this other program called Tyler, which is, stands for Turn Your Life Around. Um, and from there, I got to be part of this program with the police officers. Shout out, Hayden. Um, and it was crazy because as an 11, 12-year-old, I went on these boot camps and we had, there was mandatory camps we had to go on and they taught us how to do push-ups and they taught us how to use words of affirmation. And there was one particular th session that I had with the guy who started it and ran it. His name is Constable Brock Davis. And we're sitting there and he's like, we're all sitting in a circle and he's like, you know, I've traveled the world, guys. In fact, I know many languages. And I grew up a Pentecostal, right? So this was already like sounding a little bit like precipitizing, like he's trying to whatever. And so, and so I'm like sitting there with my mates and he's like, so I just want to speak to you all and encourage you all in different languages. Is that all right? Yeah. And then he starts, he starts, these are 11, 12 year old kids. And I was like, I know what you're doing. My dad's a Pentecostal pastor. <laughs> so we moved to Australia. Um, you know, and over the years, I still kind of went down this rabbit hole of just making bad decisions, having bad friends, being in poor circumstances until I came to a point when I was about 18 years old and radically Jesus saved me from taking my own life and led me to his cross and I gave my life over to him. And I don't know about you, but I think that's something worth praising God for because we've all been saved by the grace of God. So I'm 18 years old, given my life to Jesus, and I'm starting to look back on certain events like Constable Brock Davis and just going, you know what, God, you've, you've kind of had your hand upon me this whole time. Yeah. Different people that would used, used to prophesy over me as, as a kid and different ways that God would provide for us. I remember us being, like we never, like, and this is not an exaggeration, I've never had a Christmas gift from my parents throughout my childhood. We just couldn't do it. And, you know, my dad would mask it as, you know, it's not even Jesus's real birthday anyway, so why are we doing it? But, you know, as a young kid, you understood, like we got our first tube TV when I was about eight years old. That was, that was it. We owned this really old green high ace van that everyone used to tease me about at school. But all through that, I saw the goodness of God show up. Uh, and so when he called me to be a part of the ministry, to be a part of serving his church, I had no idea how I was going to do it. Uh, I didn't know what that meant. I was like half good at music, but I failed it in school. So I kind of didn't know if that was that. Um, and then I just said, God, I want to, I, I don't know what life's, where life's going to lead me. I just want to go on this adventure with you. And he used me as, a, uh, as an RDG leader in wildlife, as Parksy said. Uh, and then I started to get a bit better at drums. Uh, and then three years later, became part of Hillsong Church and then played my first service as a drummer at Hillsong Church. And that was the last service I played as a drummer <laughs> at Hillsong Church. And then they were like, man, you're an Islander. You can carry a tune, right? Why don't you jump up and sing, you know, on Sundays? And I was like, look, I'll, you know, I kind of am a drummer. That's what I, what I want to do. Um, and then I've been on this crazy journey with God and with ministering to His church and His people and, uh, and, and being a part of um, God 
reaching out to people and inviting them to be saved and to have a relationship with Him. And I look back on the last 19 years, I'm 38 now, and I came to Christ when I was 18. I look at the last 19, well, did, did I do the my math? Okay, good. <laughs> Quick maths. Um, and I, I look at the last 18 years and the truth is there's been a lot of highs, been a lot of great moments been a lot of victories that I've seen won. I've had a lot of friends and family who have overcome mental illness, cancer, uh, marriages restored, children coming back to Jesus. And it has been such a faith journey. And I, I look back at what God has done and there is no way you can convince me He is not a good God. So I hold that with one hand. And I think like anyone who sits here who's been alive for five minutes, you could say that on the other hand, we also go through a lot of lows. We've had friends fall away from Christ, where the cancer hasn't been in remission, where the marriage didn't get back together, where maybe in some of our lives or people that we know, the depression, that dark cloud still lingers from time to time. And as someone who's been on that mental health journey, I know that to be true. So what do we do when you feel like that, when you're faced with situations and, you know, this is a songwriting chapel, but I don't want us to make this about songs only, although this is a great inspiration for songs. But as Christian believers, what are we to do? And I think most of us would know enough about the Bible that the list is probably a hundred, you know, top of it is trust God. Second is obey His, you know, his, whatever it is. I just know for me in the last few years of, of ministry, especially over COVID, there has been three phrases or three words, and this is kind of what I wanted to share about today, that has kind of inspired me, has kept me anchored, has kept me moving forward, looking forward, has kept me showing up every Sunday when my friends were leaving church or, you know, when my family was like, why do you still go to that Hillsong church? And all, all of these things, these three phrases are the phrases that at least today, which would be a small part of our Christian journey, but I guess are the phrases that I feel like God would have me share with you today. Is that okay? All right, I'm gonna quickly pray and I've already used up half of my time. God, let this be your wisdom. Um, you know I'm not good enough to, to be able to impact anyone's lives the way you would. So Holy Spirit, if you would speak through these words, this encouragement and God, no matter where people are, are placed right now or what they are facing, God, I pray this would be a word of encouragement. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, my throat's drying up. Is there any water, please? Sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Chris. <clears throat> These are the three phrases and... If you are facing a tough season at the moment, I'd, I would encourage you to write these down and in somewhere in your house or your mirror, these three encouragements, I'd, I'd encourage you to put these up somewhere where you can see them. And um, the three phrases are simply this. <clears throat> this is not for dramatic effect. I'm literally going to dry throat. <laughs> Keep praising. Keep praying and prophesy again. It helps that they're all Ps because it kind of makes it memorable. But let's dig deep into, I feel why God put this on my heart and would have me share this with you guys today. The first thing is praise. I feel like the first thing the devil wants to rob me of or my humanity would like to rob me of or whatever it is, my circumstance, would want to disconnect me from my God, from His presence, to see God how He truly is and who He truly is. The truth is, and we've all learned this, but praise gives us access to the presence of God. It's insane to me that over the years, sorry, not insane, I do look at it and think it's a bit weird, but I'm, I'm one of those street guys that kind of has a bit of non-filter. But you look at the Old Testament and the way that you would access the presence of God was through praise, was through thanksgiving. In the hardest times of my life, I have been so uh, tempted 
to run from church services, to run from people of faith, to run from the Word of God and cry my way into His presence or crawl my way into His presence or lament my way or feel sorry for myself. We're in the Old Testament in Psalm 104. It says, Enter His gates with thanksgiving in your heart and your courts with praise. And I get it, God moves and sometimes we get overwhelmed and sometimes it brings us to tears and sometimes there are moments like that. But if when you're in your darkest season, can I encourage you? Can I actually challenge you? Figure out how to keep praising. To unlock the presence of God on your life in those situations. You look at the Israelites when they went into battle, they didn't, they didn't scream or cry out to God, they praised Him. When the walls of Jericho came down, they circled that sucker seven times and it was all praise. Am I allowed to say sucker? Okay. In Psalm uh, 22, 3, it says this, that God inhabits the praises of His people. There's something about it. When we in an authentic way put God where He truly belongs in our life, whether you're failing or not, whether your circumstances are dire or not, when we say, God, you are holy, you are worthy, you are good, you are the creator of the universe. Something about that just goes to him, ah, I need to be close to that. They see me for who I truly am. And so I am gonna invade that space and be in that place with them. I wonder what storms we're facing where we've resorted to panicking rather than praising. I wonder what situations you're in right now that is causing you to panic. But maybe you should praise him. The second thing is prayer. I try to keep this concise, but I I just couldn't. Prayer invites the voice and the peace of God. What do I mean by that? Uh, In in, a staff meeting yesterday, we sang a song. I don't even know what the name of the song is, but it was, um, I sought the Lord and and He heard. That's the name of it. That's right. And uh, it was, who wrote it? Uh, That's right, yeah. But it says, I cried out to the Lord and He answered me. And if there's any recurring theme in my story, I would say it would be that. When I sought the Lord, He heard and He answered. It invites His voice, this communication, this this continual, uh, you know, spiritual discipline that we have to pray actually invites the voice of God into our lives. How does it invite the peace of God? One of my favourite scriptures growing up, it was hanging on the wall. And every time we did memory verse or Bible study with my family, and they were like, all right, memory verse of the day. It was the only one on the wall. So it was the one that I'd always say. And it'd be like, you know, I'm 10 years old. So I'm like, ah, Philippians, Philippians 4, 6. But it says this, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need. Thank Him for all that He's done. And verse 7 says, Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and His mind and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. I always, you know, just something helpful here, something practical when we're facing seasons where we don't know what's ahead or we feel helpless or we don't know what songs to write because we and ourselves are not are in a good place or we're meant to preach and we don't know what to preach about or we're meant to, you know, witness to people but we don't know what to witness about because of the season of life that we're in. I always go to this and say, God, I don't know everything that's going to happen. I don't know what's, I don't know, I don't know what I'm meant to be doing. But I'm going to praise you, which is what it says, you know. Tell God what you need. Don't forget to thank Him for His answers. And then the peace of God, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. That communication with God invites peace. It invites peace and He answers prayers. What have we conceded to pressure that we should have committed to prayer? What pressures are you facing that even though you might not see an answer right now, you should be bringing to the feet of Jesus? And then the last thing, which is prophesy, prophecy. Prophesy again. Um, I say again because I've been in those situations where you've prayed for healing, you've prophesied healing, and it hasn't come to pass. 
there's one thing I've learned over the last 19 years is there is power in prophesying. There is power in prophesying again. I am not a biblical scholar or, you know, most of you probably could teach me something or two about the prophetic and about the Bible. But for me, the power of prophecy is in aligning my life to the Word of God. If you don't know what to prophesy over your life or the life of other people, figuring out what God's will is through His Word and speaking it over your life and over people's lives changes something. And even when you don't see it, we prophesy again. We prophesy again. And what I love about prophecy and prophesying is it is accessible to all of us. Um, Who loves Acts 2? I love Acts 2. And in verse 17, it says, In those last days, God says, I'll pour my Spirit out on all people. Your young, your, your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women will pour out my Spirit on those days. And they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below. I love that. And then it ends in verse 21 by saying, And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. I'm going to invite the team back up. And we're going to sing for a couple of minutes. But I wanted to drive this point home. And if you wanted like a a title, I'm not really good at titles, but if you wanted something to put at the top of your page, I understand that the theme is I've got faith for this. So my title would be, I've got faith for this, but what are we saying? What are we saying? The common thread with those three Ps for me is that for the most part, those all come from our lips. There's a power in confession. There is a power in what comes from the lips of our mouth. We can have a thousand things going on in our mind. We can have a thousand things going on in our spirit and our heart. But what comes out of our lips is the architecture and the foundation of how life is played out within us and around us. In the Bible, it says this, it says, oh, I scrolled up and said down. In Proverbs 18, 21, death and life are in the power of the tongue and those who love it will eat its fruit. And I love that when people are invited to salvation in Romans, they are said to confess with your mouth with Jesus Christ as Lord and they will be saved. What are we saying? What are we saying? Are we walking into situations going, God, I know you're good for this. Are we walking into songwriting rooms saying, God, I know there's a great song here. Inspire us to write. What do our church need to be singing? That's why I love songwriting because you're putting prayers and prophecy into the mouths of people that want to praise Him. So what are we saying? Let's keep praising Let's keep praying and let's prophesy again. Can we stand to our feet with the last 10 seconds that I have? Because we're going to sing this and I don't know who needs to sing this. We'll be singing it a lot in church. So I'm sorry if there's a bit of fatigue around this song. But I believe to kickstart that spirit, that attitude of I'm going to keep praising. I'm going to keep praying. I'm going to keep prophesying. Is maybe at some point today, you need to get alone with God. Maybe sometime tomorrow, the first thing you do when you get up is to use your lips and your mouth to speak God's will and His truth and His goodness over your life. I don't know who needs to sing this. I sing it on the daily. It's simply this, come on my soul. Don't you get shy on me. Lift up your song because you've got a lion inside of those lungs. So get up and praise the Lord. Get up and praise the Lord. Can we keep praising Him? Can we keep prophesying? Can we keep praying and inviting the voice of God and the peace of God into our lives? There's a breakthrough around the corner for so many of us. So keep praising, keep praying, keep prophesying, keep praising, keep praying, keep prophesying. Come on, let's sing that out really quickly.
David, where's David gone? David, that was an incredible word. And you are prophetic. You are a prophetic speaker. And I love what you finished with because yes, prophecy is on all of us. But even what you shared at the beginning, thank you for your obedience. The, dream, the dreams thing was a thing. And so we've got a lot to reflect on as a college community, a lot to ponder. And David, thanks again. Can we thank David one more time? For that great word. Welcome to autumn, ladies and gentlemen. It's hoodie season again. Um, I'll, I'll talk about the hoodie in a second. But um, uh, tomorrow at our Hills Chapel, we are going to continue with this creative focus. And actually, we're going to be praying for creativity. Um, we're going to be praying for more original songs. We're going to be uh, dedicating our, um, and believing for our creative students. And at the city, we've got a community picnic happening. So bring your hoodie tomorrow if it's outside for our community um, picnic. And then um, right after chapel today in this room, uh, we are going to be running a Next Steps session, which some of you know about already. Um, but this is for anybody who is heading into a new award, finishing uh, your current award, and you need more information on Visa, um, on what the next season looks like. So we're gonna be running it in here, and I know it's lunchtime, so we are providing carbohydrates uh, for everybody. So right after chapel, stick around. Um, we'll be bringing snacks to this session. It should only be, it's only gonna be about 20 minutes. Is that right, Katie? 20 minutes, so uh, that's the plan for this afternoon. Um, and last thing is next week is our college open day. And uh, we have Lucinda Dooley bringing the word next week, which um, is gonna be incredible. And so um, I just wanna say a big thank you to, um, to everyone who has invited their friends, I invited people from church. Um, we had a bunch of people RSVP across the weekend, which was wonderful. And don't forget, if you bring someone on open day, you get to have one of these hoodies just in time for autumn. Um, does anyone want this hoodie? Like right now? Come next week and bring a friend and I'll give it to you. So anyways, I'm gonna pray and then, and thank you, Katie Dodson, amazing. Team night tonight for all of our creative students at the Hills and tomorrow night at the city campus, we also have team night, so that'll be good. I'm gonna pray and then maybe we'll go out with a short song. Misty, no? Amazing, okay. Father, we thank You uh, for Your presence in this place. Thank You for the Word today. Father God, I pray that we would take on board praising, Lord, we would take on board prayer and the challenge to prophesy. Father God, I pray that we will continue to speak faith in our day to day. Father God, we thank You for this week. I pray that You will continue to do miracles um, in our college body. Father, we thank You for all You have done today, Lord. And pr we're praying for a great day in classes, a great week and a great weekend in Your house. In the Name of Jesus, Amen, Amen, Amen. Be blessed, college. Thank you, Originals team. Let's go. Here we go. This is no performance. Lord, I pray it's worship. Empty words I can afford. I'm not chasing feelings. That's not why I'm singing. You're the reason for my song.